Uh, so pre-calculus, right, cover the material called polar coordinates. So today I only started to cover polar coordinates, but we're going to use polar coordinates to to describe curves in in the xy plane. Okay, sometimes we find out it's more convenient to use polar coordinates instead of a Cartesian coordinate. Cartesian is x y coordinate system. Okay, so uh, so let me uh, uh, describe uh, polar coordinates first. First of all, you know. In the plane, you have a x y coordinate system. It's two axes perpendicular to each other. Once this, once you fix that, just like in physics, you have to use a coordinate system. Then you can tell the location where the exact point. See, this is a very basic, basic things uh, for for military missiles. How to fight missile, right? And they have to program it. <laughs> you needed to tell them where it's a target. So how do you do that, right? It's more complicated, not like this one. Because the Earth is around the sphere, it's not exactly around the sphere; it's an ellipsoid. Okay, so be very you have to be very accurate. Otherwise, you know, even even GPS system, for example, need a math. So here, yeah, this is a flat plane. We have a coordinate system fixed. And then every point, right? You can have x y coordinates coordinates of that point. That so so that tells you the location of the point. But there's another way to describe this point. We use a line from the origin. And we measure this R, and then you rotate the counterclockwise, and that's a theta, okay? Then we find out X is gonna be R cosine theta, Y equals R sine theta. So if you tell me R and the theta, the values R and theta, I can tell you X and Y, then I can tell you where to locate the point, okay? So, uh, so X, R, theta are called the polar coordinates of this point, let's call this point a P, okay? And the X, Y are called Cartesian coordinates or X, Y coordinates of, of the point. So they are, they are, there is, yeah, it's not exactly when to work correspondence because you can locate uh, uh, this terminal side, uh, twice okay for that so this is a it's not going to be unique and then let's just let's look at uh, uh let's look at the point here on the circle okay let's look at the point on the circle and this is a point uh let's yeah look at this point um uh, this is going to be the first coordinate will be square three over two second coordinate we we have okay so x equals square three over two, and y equals one half. I'm going to describe this point as polar coordinates. How can I do that? Uh, I draw the line, right? I have to figure out what is up, okay? Now, from, from the above equation, right, you can see that uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? Right? We also see that, uh, yeah, how do you get uh, theta, right? We also see that uh, if you don't want to use R here, then uh, tangent theta is going to be uh, Y over X is going to be tangent theta, for example, right? If you want to determine the angle theta. Okay, there are many ways to, uh, uh, to determine theta. So once you give X and Y, you should be able to find theta, I and the theta. So from here, R square, uh, is going to be x squared plus y squared. So it's square three over two square and the one half of square, which is one. So i is going to be positive, we're assuming that, right? I could be negative, okay, in some cases. i is positive, so i is going to be one. Then the theta, okay? Uh, so you see that cosine theta equals x over r, x over r, right? So x is going to be square root of 3 over 2 over 1, which is square root of 3 over 2. And sine theta equals y over r, which is just equal to 1 half. So clearly, theta is going to be pi over 6. Okay, But the theta can be also 
pi over six plus two k pi because because yeah this i is not unique you see that right so those are called the co polar coordinates of the same point the polar coordinates are not unique they're not unique for the given point okay and uh, unless you put a restriction on theta uh, on the value I, I also can be uh, 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 negative okay so this uh, uh, let's describe this in the following way okay so the same point yeah I'm going to describe uh, for the same point describe two different ways I could be negative I could call it in eyes positive uh, this angle yeah I and the theta could be one right and the pi over six you know this is not exactly equal let's just correspond and I also can uh, one and the pi over six plus two pi okay so, so those are all the coordinates uh, polar coordinates of the same point oh this is yes this should be x yeah x y uh corresponding to this okay they're not exactly yeah okay, i don't put it exactly here. okay so now what happens if, it, if can i let r to be negative r to be negative if i is negative you can try this way okay when i is negative it begin with So this is the angle, right? This is a point here, right? Here's a pi over six. I right, know the rash. Okay, in order to get to the same point, uh, in order to get the same point, uh, you know, we uh, if you let R to be negative one, negative one have to go the other direction. This is negative one, right? Pi, if, if negative one pi over six is this point. Okay, first of all, uh, you choose point with positive r, right? Then negative you change the direction. This is how do we describe it, the same point. So in order to choose this point, what I'm going to do is you have to this angle first, get to the point, and change the direction. So this angle is going to be pi, uh, yeah, pi uh, 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 plus pi over 6. So this will be negative 1, pi over 6 plus pi. Right. So this also describe the same point. Why? Let me show you. Okay, x is going to be negative one cosine pi over six plus pi, and the y is going to be negative also sine pi over. Six. Okay, and actually that's going to be a, a positive cosine pi over six, and and this is going to be positive sine pi over six. Okay. It's one times one. So that's the reason uh, a negative one pi over six plus pi also are coordinates of the same point. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how do you describe um, the point was negative r? Okay. So the, uh, the idea is, yeah, the idea is, uh, yeah, if r is negative, right? Uh, yeah, let's, let, let's look at the problem, okay? Plot the point, point, okay. Uh, R theta equals negative one, and uh, and the pi over four in the x y plane, okay, in the polar plane. Okay, how do you do that? Well, you can find the x y values. That's okay. You know, you can do algebraically. You don't need to even look at the picture. And x is going to be R, right? Negative one. Cosine pi over four, y equals negative one sine pi over four, right? And that is going to be negative square root of two over two and negative square root of two over two. So this will be in the in the third quadrant. Okay, so here's a point, and this is a this is a point, right? Negative square root of two over two, negative square root of two over two. So this is a point, okay? But the angle here, look at, right? The, the lens from here to here, the angle here is not a pi over four, okay? The angle here is not going to be pi over four. So what we do is, yeah, we can sketch the graph in the, yeah, we, we can describe the same point in different ways, right? So the second method that we do is, 
First of all, you find the angle, okay? Pi over four, that's a theta. But since i is negative, we just have to go the other direction. Okay, i equals negative one. This is i equals one. So you have to go to that. This is our point, okay? Right? If i is positive, then that is a point. So i is negative, have to go the opposite direction. So that's why you end up with the same point, okay? But you can also describe uh, in the following way, it's going to be positive one, cosine pi over four plus pi, y equals positive to one sine pi over four plus pi. So, so the same point has polar coordinates one and the uh, and the five pi over four. Okay, so the same point. Yeah. So let's look at this. So this is the same as one. 5 pi over 4 plus pi is, yeah, pi over 4 plus pi is pi over 4, okay? So the polar coordinate of the second polar coordinates, okay, second pair of polar coordinates also give the same point. Now that's not a unique. You can describe the second point, this point in another way, you can go from here to here. Uh, the yeah, starting point is a, uh, yeah, let's use this red pen. I rotate the counterclockwise. Uh, I rotate the clockwise for the same, right? Rotate clockwise. I think this is a pi minus pi over four. So it's going to be three pi over four, okay? But this is angle of absolute value, right? But the counterclockwise should be negative. So it's going to be one negative three pi over four. Okay. Yeah. Is it because orientation is, you know, clockwise? Clockwise, then the, the angle is actually the, is a, is going to be negative. Yeah. So this, I am more precise. I should put a negative sign here. That's our theta. Okay. So negative pi over four, three pi over four. Okay. And uh, still, you know, because you don't need it to flip it over to the other side. So that's why it's positive. So the same, same, the same point in four coordinates, okay, they are, are different. Okay. All right, so that's about polar coordinates. Why we have to do that? Well, if you describe the curve in the space, in the XY plane, right? How do you describe it? You describe it in the following. This is angle theta, and this is r. So if, when you change the value of r, right, you have to change the value of r. theta. So theta is gonna be function of, uh, i is gonna be the function of theta. So you can basically use, use, uh, use this function to describe the curve, right? Yeah, so this is a called, it is called, is called the polar equation of the curve. Okay. <coughs> yeah, polar equation of the curve. Now, once you're given polar equation of the curve, just one equation, right? You can get parametric equations for the curve. Yeah, we can we can use it to get parametric equations. Uh, parametric equations uh, in theta, okay? Equation in theta, the variable theta. How do you do that? Well, x is called, you know, r cosine theta, right? i is gonna be a function of theta, and the y equals r sine theta. So it's r theta, Sine theta. So uh, x and y depends on one parameter, which is theta. So theta. Okay. So you get the poly equations. Uh, uh, parametric equation for the same curve. Okay. Now, if you can cancel theta, then you get the equations in x, in x, y. Okay. If we can cancel theta, eliminate theta, then we can get x, y. Uh, get the equation in x, y. Okay. So let's take a look at the example. Okay. 
half. Okay. So the circle with radius two uh, is described by this equation. Okay, I'm, I'm going to describe the circle using Pauli equations. Okay, Pauli equation is very simple in this case. Why? Because for every theta, this point r is always equal to one. So the Pauli equation for this, uh, yeah, the Pauli equation for this circle is going to be just i equals two. Very simple. Okay, no restriction on theta. And that's it. So i is always equal to the so circle. And uh, we uh, we can we also uh, uh, sometimes we are get a given Pauli equation we want to get the equation x y or vice versa. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. Okay, the next one I'm going to change the problem a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put a circle here instead of. Okay, so this time the radius, this radius, yeah. Radius is going to be one at this point. Okay, so the equation would be x minus one square plus y square equals one, right? Can we find a Pauli equation for this curve? Uh, maybe there are many ways to do that. Okay, there are indeed there are many ways to do. That. Uh, we, uh, oh, sorry. but the equation will be the unique, okay? What you do is, you have to describe, this is the angle theta, right? You have to describe the R. Okay, how can I describe the R? All right. When say that increases, uh, changes, decreases actually, okay? So how do you do that? All you have to do is use this equation, okay? And, uh, and you put into the equation, okay? You get R cosine theta minus square plus R sine theta square equals one. And let's expand it, R square Cosine square theta minus two r cosine theta plus one uh, plus r square sine square theta equals one, right? So what I get, this two add it together get r square minus two r theta plus one equals one. So one one cancel out. I get r r minus two cosine theta equals zero. So clearly r cannot be zero. Only one special case, I call there, right? So I is not going to be zero. Look at this, right? Look at the picture. So this implies I equals two cosine theta. So when theta increases, yeah, theta is uh, theta is between zero and two pi. So you get a complete curve when theta increases. Okay. Yeah, but but here R could be negative. Okay. R could be let, let's understand the when the R could be negative. R is not necessarily positive. Okay. R could be negative. Now how do you understand this picture? Uh as negative, right? Look at the picture here. This is the angle, right? When the angle is between zero and two pi, I is positive, right? So this is R. So here, right? I is positive. But when theta, when theta is larger than pi over two, R will, right? I is negative actually, so you're drawing the picture here. Okay, I is negative. And this is a theta. Okay, when theta is larger than pi over, two, pi over two, cosine pi is negative, I is negative. So when you plot the point, you have to go to the opposite side. And actually this is a point here. That's why you get, uh, you get a circle. 
I think you get circle, you get complete circle when theta is between zero and pi. Now you don't need a two pi because you already, uh, you see, when theta from when theta from zero to to pi to half pi, you already get this quad, right? You already get uh, this this portion of the upper semicircle. You imagine. Then when theta from pi over two to pi, you get the lower semicircle. So, so it yeah, it's important to determine the 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 domain for the theta. Why? Because you are going to use this domain to calculate the length of the of the curve, right? So you don't over count the length, double count the length, don't double count the length. Okay. You can also describe uh, this uh, uh, circle for pi from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, or you can, you know, you can try this. It's the same. The period is pi. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to uh, solve the inverse problem. We're going to, we are given the polar coil equation. Uh, we're trying to sketch the graph. Okay. Sketch the graph with polar equation. Okay. The polar equation is r equals four secant theta. Well, okay. Theta is between negative pi over two and the positive pi over two. What is the best way to sketch the graph? I prefer to use Cartesian equation in x, y. Okay, just like what we did for, uh, in the last section. You know, you get an equation, parametric equation in time t. And, uh, and then you have to choose, select the special value of t, then you calculate the corresponding value x and y, and then you plot them. Then if it has mistakes in computation and you get a stranger points location, then you have to try to connect them. I use the imagination and the graph maybe it's not the graph we want but if you can convert it to the equation x y maybe maybe you are familiar with this type of equation so you are able to see the the the, the, the graph before you sketch it okay you understand the graph before you sketch it. so let's take a look at this right i know i cause i'm not familiar with second just like it's going to be cosine theta, right? Okay. So, uh, so secant. Yeah, this is a sec. Uh, this is a secant theta. So secant theta is one over cosine theta. No wonder theta cannot be pi over two. Why? Because if theta equal pi over two, cosine theta is going to zero. Four over zero is undefined. But that also tells you that. R could be very large. Okay, R is positive clearly, right? So, so, so you can see that R is positive. You also see that R goes to uh, uh, positive infinity as theta approaches pi over two from negative side, or theta approaches pi over two, negative pi over two from positive side. Either way, is the denominator getting smaller and smaller, right? And then the ratio, which is four over cosine theta is getting nine. So if you sketch the graph, you imagine it will go to infinity. Now, but if you rewrite this equation, get R cosine theta equals four. Then you realize that this is nothing but X. In other words, in the Cartesian equation, you only get X equals four. What is that? This is a vertical line, okay? So this is a vertical line, okay, at four, x equals four, okay? So this polar equation is just described, maybe, uh, yeah, that's right, the polar equation, this is r, okay? So i is gonna be ck 
four over secant theta. And actually, it describes a vertical line. Okay. Why? Because I, I modify the equation, I get r times cosine theta equals four. R times cosine theta, I know it's just x coordinate of the point. So the x coordinate of the point must be equal to four. Okay, since when theta increase from zero to two pi, the i is getting longer and longer, right? So you should get the whole line. I should get the whole line. All right, so then let's let's sketch. Uh, yeah, this is the graph is only here. So let's put it here, okay. Sketch the graph of R squared sine two theta equals one. Okay. Right. No restriction R. R could be negative, maybe could be positive. Okay. No restriction on the theta. Let's say sine. Yeah, sine, sine two theta, yeah. <clears throat> Only thing we know is x equals r sine cosine theta, right? X equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. So I'm trying to change it to change it to 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 equation to equation x one. I don't need that as a poly parametric equations. I just need the x equation x one. Okay. So so r square sine two theta is going to be r square two sine theta cosine theta. And immediately you can see that this is going to be r times cosine theta, r times sine theta equals one. So this is x, this is a y. So you will get two x times y equals one. Okay. So or y equals one over two x. Are we are familiar with this type of equation? So you have a two uh, symmetric curves about the origin in the first quadrant and third quadrant. Okay, so this is a graph. Okay. Now the only problem is whether the the graph described by this poly equation occupies the whole two line, two pieces, right? Completely. So what is the angle theta? This is theta, okay? Now when theta is between zero and uh, two pi, right? When theta is between zero and uh, two pi, uh, zero and pi over two, sine, sine theta, I think uh, that will be enough. You know, theta is between zero and uh, pi over two. That means two theta is between zero and the pi. That means sine two theta is positive. Okay, so r i actually is going to be plus minus, right? Plus minus square one over sine two theta. Okay, so that's why you have a two pieces symmetry. Given theta between zero and the pi over two, and you get two r's. When is the opposite negative side? So when you when you plot the points, you always plot a pair of points. Okay. So when theta increases from zero to from zero to the pi over two, you get two curves. Okay. Based on this is two equations. Get yeah, two equations. Okay. So the angle is between zero and the pi over two. Okay. Theta cannot be between zero pi over two and the pi. But to say that can be in the third quadrant, but that still, you just re-sketch the graph. You don't get a new graph, okay? So first of all, it's enough, say that's between zero 
and pi over 2. Okay. Now, we also should know that whether i is getting larger and larger when theta approaches, I think when theta approaches 0 from pi side, or as theta approaches pi from negative side, I think sine 2 theta approaches 0. So that's why i approaches uh, plus minus infinity. Right? So, so it's clearly the graph of, of the Pauli equation right, is, is a pair of these two curves. Com complete pairs, okay? It's not like a portion of this curve. Okay, we sketch this curve, we sketch the graph using the Cartesian equation, y equals one over two x. But maybe just portion of that, you know, right? The curve, the, the graph described by the Pauli equation. Okay. All right. Our next problem is more interesting, and uh, sketch the graph y equals one minus sine c. Okay. So, you know, on the Valentine's Day, maybe you want to send the card to your, to your lover, right? So maybe you just write down this equation. Hey, my heart is, <laughs> my feelings. <laughs> Like this equation, so you maybe you can figure it out. Or you can figure it out what's going on. Okay, you don't need that. Okay. If he or she already taken calculus too, then still couldn't figure it out. Then it's ah, uh, no, he's not smart. He's, don't date him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is a equation. Uh, we're trying to sketch the graph. Now this time, it's harder to change it to the Cartesian equation. Almost impossible, okay? Uh, because it's complicated, how can you write? R is, uh, R could be, oh, no, R never be negative, clear. Yeah, only simple observation is R equals one minus cos, one minus sine theta, sorry, is greater than equal to zero, okay? That's some key point. When theta equals uh, uh, when theta equals pi over two, yeah, let me okay. So when it's zero, i equals zero. When sine theta equals one, so only when theta equals pi over two, right? It's a periodic function. All right. You can choose a special you can choose a special values uh, of a theta. To, then you take the corresponding value for, for r, okay? That's what we do, theta, and here's r. So theta from zero, i is one. But well then, you need more information maybe, right? How about pi over four? This is one minus square two over two, okay? It's positive number. And pi over two, uh, that's going to be zero, right? And then three pi over four, and that is going to be one minus, again, this number. And the pi, be careful when pi, let's go back to one. Now, so you can, let me skip some of them. Let's, let's look at three pi over two. When it's three pi over two, sine theta is gonna be negative one. So it's gonna be two. This is the largest number you can get, okay? And then, and this two pi, you still go back to one. So I get a pretty good idea, okay? Uh, if you draw the graph, okay? You begin with, a, you begin with, a, a, with this point, the one and the zero, okay? When theta increases, uh, R decreases all the way to zero. So when theta equals pi over two, you are here, okay? Then, then when theta increases from pi over two to pi, I increases from here to here to one. So, so you still go back to that, okay? 
Then after theta pass pi, it increases from one all the way to two when pi, when theta is three pi over two. So it's going to be like that, okay? So this is what you get, a picture, nice picture, okay? So that's a two, okay? Yeah. So look at this. This, uh, uh, this is going to be a typical example is three pi over, over two, okay? And in this case, i is going to be two, okay? So the length. Now, if uh, if uh, you increase the value, you know this picture shows the r could be zero. That's why I touched the origin. If uh, if 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 it's two minus sine theta, now in this case, this is always greater than equal to one. Never touch, uh, 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 never touch the origin. Right, r is never be zero. So in that case, you imagine, okay, you imagine that when theta equals zero. You are two here, right? Then when theta equals pi over two, sine pi over two is one, so one. Okay. It's not a zero. Yeah, here's i equals one. Then coming back to here, but when theta when theta equals, yeah, theta equals pi over two, i equals one. Theta equals pi, i equals two. Theta equals three pi over two. I is going to be three. Okay, uh, I is going to be two again. So that's why you get picture. Uh, if if the first number becomes much smaller, r minus a half of when half minus sine theta, then we have a trouble. Somewhere, i i is going to be negative because sine theta is going to be large. Okay. So when it's going to be negative, let's look at when it's going to be negative, okay? Look at this. i is less than equal to zero. It's the same as sine theta is greater than pi over two, okay? Right? Yeah, less than equal. So it's less than equal to, uh, it's equivalent to theta, if theta is between zero and pi, okay? So yeah, let's assume Theta is between zero and two pi. Otherwise, you know, the solution is more complicated. But sine pi, uh, sine pi over six is one half. So another one should be equal to pi minus pi over six, which is five pi over six. Uh, that's all, right? So you get the solution. So you know. Between those two angles, my i is negative. Okay, so when I draw the graph, be careful. When you draw the graph, okay, this is a pi, okay, this is a pi over six, this is gonna be five pi over six. So when the angle between those two lines, your eyes pass, your eyes going to be. Uh, uh, negative. So first of all, let's try. Okay, this is one half. This is a uh, one half. Okay, let me draw this graph. So imagine, right? When theta increases, yeah. When theta equals zero, i equals one half. It's positive. When theta equals pi over six, i is going to be zero. When theta equals pi over two, this is even going to be negative one half. Okay. When theta equals pi, 
it's going to be one half. And theta equals three pi over two, pi is going to be minus negative one, three over two. Okay, three over two somewhere here. So the graph looks like that. First of all, we are okay here. Okay. Okay. But when uh, when theta increases from pi over six, you 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 always get a negative r. So that's why you have to draw the graph here, negative. Okay. But when theta equals pi over two, i is negative one half. So it's somewhere here. Okay. Yeah, you have to you have to go the opposite direction to plot the point. And the then coming back. Okay. And finally. All right, so this is a twist uh, curve. Yeah. It's, so we get a, we get three different pictures, and similarly, uh, you can you can get a graph for sine theta. Okay, sine theta slightly different order uh, direction. Okay, so we have uh, in general. Uh, let me summarize. In general, if you are given a cos a i cos a plus b sine theta, or a cos a plus b cosine theta, okay, uh, you can take a out, right? So it's going to be you can take a b out. So it's going to be a over b plus sine theta. Okay, then you see that, right? You can look at this number. If this number is going to be, uh, if this number is going to be uh, exactly plus or minus one, then uh, then you have the the, the graph like half. Okay, so if a plus equals plus or minus one, then this could be zero, right? So this could be you know plus sine theta could be zero. So the graph looks like that. Okay, similar. It may be rotated. Okay. So if a and this is going to be absolute value is greater than one, okay, then the, the graph looks like okay. now this not like circle like one side a little bit round, the other side is sharp. If this is less than one, okay, then you get pictures like that. Uh, so there are three different types of pictures you will get. It depends on it, it depends on uh, the value, absolute value of A over B. Okay. So take a look at that's the same for the sine cosine. For the sine cosine, uh you probably have to rotate, you know, it's not like a vertical, you know, it's going maybe for sine cosine, maybe uh, for cosine say that. Yeah, maybe it looks like that, you know, it's possible. Okay, looks like that. Okay, it's possible, it looks like that. Okay, and it's possible, it looks like that. Uh, okay, so take a look at the for example. I equals one plus two cosine theta. Okay, we take a we take a two out, it's gonna be one half plus cosine theta. So one half plus cosine theta definitely somewhere it's negative. Somewhere it's negative, right? For some theta, it's negative. Maybe we can figure it out for what kind of theta it's negative. So let's look, let's solve this equation. Are we able to solve this equation? I do remember, right? One half plus cosine theta equals zero. So in other words, cosine theta equals negative one half. To solve this equation, I think we have to use a reference thing, okay, to solve the equation. So reference thing is always going to have a 
of a single value of cosine theta, it's going to be one half. As the reference is saying, is always between zero and pi over two. So that is the unique r here, which is pi over three. Right. So there are for cosine theta, where is negative? Cosine theta here is negative, negative, positive, positive. So it must be the angle. This is a reference this thing, okay? Reference this thing. So you have a two solutions. One is this, okay? So the theta one is going to be pi minus pi over three. So it's going to be two pi over three. Theta two is pi plus pi over three, which is four pi over three. So for cosine, uh, yeah. So when when half plus cosine theta is negative, when theta between those two angles, this is a negative for theta between theta one and the theta two. Okay. Let's think about when theta equals pi. Uh, no, it's not when screw right this one. No. It's when half plus when half plus cosine theta. Clearly when the cosine theta equals negative one, it's negative, right? So which is pi. So anyway, so you have a, you determine the way, yeah, determine the domain for the, the, the domain of theta for which the function is negative. All right, so now we can draw the graph, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, to draw the graph, I need a special values, right? And theta, this is theta, this is r. And when theta equals zero, r is going to be, hmm, theta is zero, this i is going to be three, okay? Because constant zero is one. Yeah, when theta equals, uh, yeah, we also need a pi over two. Uh, when c they call it pi over two, i is one. Okay, cosine pi over two is zero. And then when c they cos pi, and when c they cos pi, i is gonna be negative one because cosine pi is negative one, right? One minus two is negative one. Okay, and the three pi over two, it's one, and the two pi, it's, it gets three. Okay. The only thing we, we have to be very careful is this portion. So let's sketch the graph. That's not enough points. When theta equals, when theta equals three, uh, uh, zero to three here, right? Then it increases or uh, decreases, I decrease to one. And from here to here, it's gonna be like, so the only problem is maybe it does look like that, okay? You have to be very careful. Yeah, more information you need. Right. So I know when theta equals two pi over three, you already i is already zero. Okay. Then for theta between those two angles, i is gonna be negative. So actually, so you draw the picture like that. Uh, this is the angle, right? So this is the point that we're talking about, right? For the angle between, between zero, you know, if for the angle, if the theta from here to here, theta is larger than two pi over three. So I is negative, so you have to go to the other side. That's the reason, you know, you're actually what you're doing is on the back side, okay? So you draw the, draw the curve. Yeah, the angle is three pi over three from here to here. Then you draw the lines. Then you look at the oh, eyes oh, there. So you can see that. You plot the point. That's why you, that's how you get the picture. Right?
Hi, using polar coordinates, you get polar equation. So you get the, uh, you get the polar, uh, parametric equations, yeah. So polar equation, right, I equals R theta, okay? Then you get Cartesian equation. Then what you can get? You can get everything. You can find the tangent line, you can find the, you can get the lens, okay? The lens formula. So let's assume theta is between zero and, uh, between A and the B, okay? So the slope, right? Slope depends on tangent. So dy over dx is gonna be, dy over d theta, dx over d theta, right? So you can use that to to find the uh, find the slope of the line at some particular point. Okay, dy r prime theta sine theta plus r theta cosine theta, and dx of d theta. Uh, this is will be minus because the derivative of cosine be negative. All right, so that's it. Now you may uh, you maybe you can you know simplify a little bit, change it to tangent. Right? Say that. Sine theta or cosine theta, tangent theta. But I think I just leave like that. You cannot get rid of theta. Okay. So this gives you the derivative function with respect to x. Okay. So this is a point. Okay. This is an R, right? And at a particular point, but this part can be also you know, x and y are related. So y depends on x. And then dy with dx gives the tangent line, right? The slope is gonna be dy with dx at that particular point. This is a slope, right? But how do you evaluate? Right, just using that formula. So if you are given the polar equations, you can get, you can, get the parametric equations in theta for the curve. Then you can find uh, the slope of the tangent line. Uh, I'm more interested in the, the okay, so I'm more interested in the, in the lens form, the lens, right? Remember the lens. The lens L is going to be from A to B, right? And the ds, ds is gonna be x prime theta square plus y prime theta square and d theta. Okay. Yeah, here we, we view poly equation if it's the parametric equation. For the parametric equation, I do have the, uh, you know, this is a ds, right? Remember, right? So all I have to do is find the, uh, find the, uh, uh, Find this. Okay, let's simplify. Already did the calculation. It's gonna be let me just simply write R prime, okay? Cosine theta plus R sine theta square. Okay, let's simplify. Okay, let's simplify. All right, let's see. Well, when you simplify, there's a sign in the middle, right? So R prime square, cosine square theta plus R, right? Then I have a minus two R R prime, cosine square theta plus R sine theta. Okay, 
cosine theta sine theta. And the second part also gives me Wow, these two cancel out. And even much simpler. Just r prime square plus r square sine all is gone. Yeah. Okay, great. So the lens is going to just integral from zero. If you have the poor equation, you can quickly get. Uh, yeah, you can formulate the, the arc length of the piece of the curve. Okay. So uh, similarly, you can uh, you can get if you rotate the pole, uh, uh, curve in, uh, you know, with poly equation around x axis, you you also can get the area for the for the surface, okay. But uh, we're not going to pay attention to that part, right? So what do we need? Yeah, let's look at the example, okay. Let's look at the example. So this is my favorite example, right? Uh, I equals one minus sine theta, okay. We want to know the parameter of this part. Okay. Okay. We want, we can find out. Okay. So we get a complete uh, 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 curve if theta is between zero and the two pi, right? That gives all. Yeah. Sometimes be careful. Yeah. You find out theta is between zero and pi is enough to get the whole curve. Okay. But this you need it from zero to two pi. All I have to do is just the length is going to be the integral from zero to two pi and the r prime r prime is going to be uh negative cosine theta right and the uh, r is just one minus sine square theta d theta so i'm not sure we are able to uh, uh evaluate this integral okay it is going to be cosine square theta plus one minus two sine theta plus sine square theta d theta. It's possible. Everything's possible. I don't give up. <laughs> Everything's possible, right? Sine square, uh, cosine square theta, sine square theta, combine them. You get one. So one plus one is two. I think we are able to evaluate this. I can get rid of it, right? Yes or no? All right, so you can take a square root of two out. The only problem is this. Okay, sine theta. One minus. Hmm? So, so. I think I would say if it's a one minus cosine theta, that would be much easier. Why? Cosine theta, you can use. The the double angle form. Okay, so you how do you change the sine to cosine? How do you change the sine to cosine? Yeah, this is a problem. Yeah, if I give you, uh, if I change the problem like one minus cosine theta, the same. But then one minus cosine theta gives the same curve but a different location. Okay, and one minus sine theta looks like that. But this should be the same as like an I equals one minus cosine theta, then how does it look like? Uh, when theta equals zero, right? It's here. 
Wednesday tai equal zero, it's here, right? And the Wednesday tai equal pi with two is going to be one. Okay, so one minus cosine theta, this graph is the same as the graph of one minus sine theta, but just by rotating uh, uh, clockwise, maybe 90 degrees. <laughs> if you see the hat, instead of uh, using one minus sine theta, you can use one minus cosine theta. Okay, uh, what I want to say that is this is the same as. Uh, we can, yeah, this is the same as one minus cosine theta. Okay. No difference. Okay, by one minus cosine theta, you can solve it. Okay. The reason is uh, uh, this. The reason is you can change it to one minus cosine theta is going to be. One minus mm -hmm. cosine theta is one minus two sine square theta half theta. Okay, right? So you will get two sine square half theta dc. Okay, so now you can get rid of two two cancel out. Okay, and the absolute value of sine half of theta dc. So we have to know whether this is positive or negative. I think when theta is between zero and pi. Half of theta is between zero and pi. So this is always positive. Okay, it's gonna be sine two theta, d theta, and the entire derivative of this is gonna be cosine half theta divided by one half, and that's negative sine. So when you differentiate, you get negative, you get sine, right? So let's put, let's evaluate. So this is going to be uh, two, two, negative four, okay? So it'll be negative one minus one. So my answer is eight. All right, so the length of this hat is eight. Sounds interesting, right? Yeah. Eight is just like looking at like two person connect to each other. <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> All right, so so you can put the equation there and say find the total length of this parameter. <laughs> so you should end up with eight. All right, it's not easy to check. You know, I change it to cosine. If you use a sine, then so you have to use a. You do have to use substitution, but you have to change a little bit as a domain. Okay. So I switched actually. What I did is I switched to cosine. Then I will end up with one minus cosine theta. Okay. And uh, the lens, yeah, surprise, the lens is going to be eight. Uh, all right. So we uh, we stop here and prepare for the quiz. Okay. We don't have uh, much time for another problem. But let me, yeah, let me explain. To you. Suppose if you if you still want to evaluate this integral. You are not able to change. Yeah, yeah, it's not easy to change it to uh, 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 something square, okay? And how do you do that? You change it to cosine, it's easy, okay? When theta, you, you can let, you know, we know that, right, sine, uh, sine theta, okay? If you let theta to be, how about like this? If you let theta to be, to be u plus pi over two, okay? u plus pi over two, then sine theta is gonna be sine u plus pi over two, get rid of pi over two, you will get cosine u, okay? Do you, uh, do you know this? Okay. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, this not always, uh, let me check, okay. So the bet, it's better to use, use a minus, okay, otherwise, yeah, my the formula will originally remember is, is like this. 
if it's pi minus u, okay? Yeah, then sine theta is going to be cosine u. Okay, that's a relationship. Okay, so you, if it's zero from two pi, when minus sine theta, d theta, if you change to u, and then this will be negative d theta negative u, right? It's one minus cosine u, but the interval will be changed when theta, when when yeah, u is going to be pi over two minus theta. So when theta is zero, it's pi over two. When theta is this is negative three pi over two. Okay, but it's okay. You get a, you still you get the same result. Okay, so you can change it to three pi over two negative and here pi over two and one minus cosine u d okay this is a trick okay and then then you can use a half angle formula that will be two sine square half of u d u okay and then uh, then you take to square out The only problem is whether you can easily get rid of the Abbasian very symbol. No, you can't. Okay, because when uh, when u is between negative and, and between negative three power two and and pi over two. Okay, and pi over the u over two. Yeah, we have a problem here, right? To So you have to be uh, uh, careful. Some area, some in some place, it's negative. Sometimes it's positive. So you have to change sign. Okay, but if but it's a total area which is the same. Okay, the total area will be same. Uh, so you uh, this is gonna be greater than or equal to. Okay. And from here to here, and you can change it back, change it back to the theta, okay? If you change it back to the theta, then the, yeah, then much easier to see that, okay? Change it back to the theta, yeah, theta is going to be what? Theta is going to be, uh, yeah, theta is going to be pi over two minus u, right? So you change it back to the theta and, uh, uh, theta is going to be, uh, this part is going to be two pi, right? And this part is going to be zero and sine, okay? And u is going to be, u is going to be, uh, well, u is going to be pi over two minus theta divided by two, okay? And then negative d theta, okay? So you will get, Right. And then, uh, then you can, uh, then you can get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. Then you can, can get rid of a uh, uh, sign. So I'll stop here. I'm not going to continue. Okay. So you, you can, because there's no value for that. So you just need to know where it's positive, where it's negative, get rid of the pseudo symbol, then you evaluate. Okay. So the answer is state code A. Uh, no, this is a, yeah, this is just portion of that. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's an argument to square root eight. Square root eight or divided by two. All right, so see you, uh, see you next time. Uh, Monday, yeah, we're gonna go quick.